Welcome back, everyone. While Edward Gaming and AHQ make their final preparations for the next game, we want to head over to Twitter and see who you guys are predicting to conquer MSI. Our first response comes from at Kiwi Hervio, who says Fnatic will win. Other teams aren't prepared for Fnatic's aggressive play style. Also, Hooney. Uh, <laughs> our next one comes from at Long Hair No Pants who writes, SKT is definitely going to win. Faker, Easy Hoon, and the very often overlooked Bang are just too good. A lot of strong players on that team for sure. And finally, at Energy Drink 445 says, Pawn will just crush Faker mid lane. It's going to be 2014 again. Uh, those are strong words there. Yeah, that's a very strong statement coming through there. I think Pawn definitely very good laner. He showed that against Rookie, but Wayless gave him a lot of trouble. Seems to struggle against control style mid laners. I don't know whether it's going to be a crushing, but if anyone can do it, I'd probably give it to Whoa, 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 whoa. When I was talking about mid laners at the start, man, you interrupted me for Pawn. The <laughs> well, because you Pawn is very good. <laughs> Pawn is very good, but to say that he's got a crush faker may be considered outlandish. We'll keep hitting us up throughout the day. Remember, we are at Loll Esports, and be sure to use the hashtag at MSI2015. But now let's shift into gear for our third match, Edward Gaming versus AHQ. They are two teams that qualified for the 2014 World Championship, but both of them had their world's run cut short. Yeah, EDG has a history of really kind of dominating China. They had a little bit of a rough road this time, but a lot of that is off the back of pawn and like going back and forth with the sub but the thing now is when they go to international competitions they've always fallen short though and now I think it's completely different with their new lineup I think they have star power in every role they have really dominant laners and they work well as a team the only thing here is can they deal with a multi-threat team they definitely seem to be able to yeah, the other thing that I really want to look at quickly is how healthy is Pawn. We've seen that he didn't play the series against WE apart from the last game when he flew in on a Cassidy and was kind of the Superman, rescued the show. He absolutely crushed IG. Rookie really struggled against him. And when Rookie loses lane, one of the better laning mid laners, at least in the world, in my opinion, then you know something's going wrong. And then kind of struggled once again against Wayless or Godvi in the last series. I think that's more about control uh, laners. So Pawn is a question mark for me. Someone who's not a question mark for me, though, is Deft. This guy, in my opinion, once again, is unrivaled the best AD carry in the world. And he's a straight-up upgrade of where he came from. So they had Name, very good AD carry, one of the best team-fighting AD carries, but Deft shored up his laning prowess. And couple him in with someone like Mako, put him in a lane swap meta, this guy is an absolute monster. One of the things I don't like about EDG is the fact that they have so much star power with... Pawn and Death, that's hard for the other teammates to really stick out and somebody to look at him and say, oh, that guy's really good. But Koro, as of late, has been really stepping it up. He's been doing a lot of work on Nar, Mauka, and Hecarim. And particularly the Nar is the one that I want to touch upon. He plays it better than anybody else. And the argument for Nar coming back is the fact that, well, Mauka is a very one dimensional champion. If he falls behind, he still does the same thing. And he can only really root somebody and CC with his arcane smash. Hecarim, TP flanks, does a little bit more carry damage, but Nara, on the other hand, is a champion that has a really high skill ceiling. And at the highest point, he is more impactful than the Hecarim and the Maokai. He's really good at this champion, and I don't think anybody in this tournament should let that champion go by, or else they'll probably lose lane and lose team fights. Well, it sounds like a super team, but on the other side of this matchup, AHQ were not the favorites from LMS and finished in fourth place, but they had a huge performance in the LMS playoffs where they took down Hong Kong Esports, the Taipei Assassins, and the Yoey Flash Wolves. Yeah, if you look at the other side, you have AHQ, who were mediocre in the normal splits, and coming into this tournament, really stepped up uh, by, with the 5.5 patch, and as well, how they changed up their roster, they put Albus to support, who was prior their jungler, and set in uh, Mount into the jungle. And I think from there on out, it just worked out really well for them. Yeah, yeah imp improved their team structure. They put Green Tea into their uh, coaching role, so that gave them a big boost. And it unlocked Ant. Uh, Ant. This guy, he turned into the real carry of this team, stepped up absolutely huge. He plays Urgot, plays Callista. She has a similar champion pool to Deft. But in saying that, he is facing off against Deft. So you have this massive challenge. You come out of the LMS, you show that you are a real threat, and then first match you get thrown in to a lane against Deft. I do have to say, I fear that in this matchup, uh, where we have some of the strongest individual players and laners in the world on the side of EDG against the players of AHQ who do have a tendency to fall behind in CS, that this could go rather one-sided quickly. 
Yeah, it certainly does have the possibility. And, you know, this isn't the first time we've seen Westor versus Pawn. It happened at Worlds last year. And Westor, even in that stage, was struggling in lane and wasn't really able to pull it together. I think he had like a 1.58 KDA against Pawn in those games. And that's just not going to get it done. Pawn was up around the 15 mark. He was an absolute monster. Right, so, so where is the solution then for HQ? We do know that they excel in the 4-1 split push, but if they can't get out of lane and, and set themselves up properly for Westdoor to go into the 1v1 scenario, how do they beat EDG? Now, Westdoor has shown that he's, he's struggling with the CS differential in the mid lane, but that doesn't mean that he can't help his side lanes. And I think the key for them to stand a chance against EDG would be to go with a global champion. They need to go with the Karthus, the Twisted Fate, punish EDG, who may be a little bit over-aggressive in the side lanes, to teleport on them, use your Requiem, get some extra damage in there, something that's a little bit unexpected, because, you know, not that many people in China play Karthus as often as AHQ does. Yeah. I, uh, you first. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing you really have to look up in this matchup is the fact that if EDG don't get ahead early on the current patch, they will stall the game. So they'll wait until death gets stronger. So if at any point you can grab the first couple of dragons, it opens that window where EDG really put the brakes on currently. And it's something that we're not used to seeing out of the Chinese team, uh, scene. But if they get ahead, expect them to go berserk Chinese Wrecking Ball, all that good stuff with Koro, <laughs> Mako and Clear Love just smashing people. But if they ever do fall behind, they will stall the game out and I think that AHQ do have a shot there. Exactly my point. I think this will be either way in the early game fire fought with fire and we see a lot of fighting and AHQ as well as ADG is easily a team that goes behind your first tower trying to zone you away and trying to go for the kills and they are not afraid to do any risky plays if they know that they have it. What I find very interesting, actually, is that AHQ has the fastest average first dragon kill at nine and a half minutes, and they generally do try and put a lot of pressure down there and get that five dragon counter started, and yet they have the longest average game time in wins at 42 minutes. So it does really, uh, you know, uh, support the idea that they play to the global objective of the dragon being their major win condition. Yeah, and that signals to me that there's going to be a lot of fights around the dragon, and EDG are really good at playing around spikes and buying for the dragon. They really like to, as you like to call it, thrift shop. They buy like every little piece of gold that they can and potion up for these types of objectives to force team fights. And like you said, if they get ahead, they're going to just continue to try and snowball it and be aggressive. Yeah, and the other thing that you shouldn't be surprised out at EDG is if they try and take the maximum. They're a very greedy team. They win a 20-minute team fight with like two people left on the map. They're rushing Baron. They're leaving a person, a dragon, to try and take that. They're shoving waves at the same time. So I think they are a punishable team. I just think that their execution at the moment is extremely good. And I feel like really at this point, they are not afraid to go for an objective. So even if it's 50-50 drain because the jungle is around, they are just looking to look for the fight when yeah. they know that they are stronger. And they instantly go for it and say, okay, maybe it's 50-50, you maybe take the drain, but we kill your entire team afterwards and you can be sure of that. All right, well, that being said, I do want to get your guys' uh, predictions on this match. I just really quickly, I have to assume EDG across the board. Yeah. Am I am I am I EDG. correct? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. I need, <laughs> need the confirmation there, Siren. Well, as EDG. we throw it over to our casters for the call, Westor talks about facing Pawn at Worlds last year. This is AS4 when Pawn and Pawn were playing in the Sen Song. At the first time, we lost very badly. At the second time, we had fought around and around. But later, we had to deal with it. We fell into the Long Zhan and got the Dragon Shield. We hope this time we can deal with it better and come back. Well, hopefully what they have in mind is still something that actually plays out a very different time, a different setting, and a different team as well. It might still be Pawn, but it's going to be changed. I agree, and I think if Westor is going to be remembering things, it's going to be nightmares against Pawn, and then a little bit of positivity against EDG. You know, they did, he was the only player on yeah. the, the current HQ roster that got into that tiebreaker. The shot of making it out of groups, it's going to need to be better than that performance if he wants to make it out of groups this year. And it does seem like AHQ is actually quite confident coming into this one. They believe they have a real shot at winning this tournament and they are another team in a sense like Fnatic who is very underestimated coming in here and have a lot to prove whereas EDG has more to lose than they do to prove here. All right we'll have to see let's get to it with a quick look at the starting lineups on the blue side it is Edward Gaming that means it's Koro in the top lane, Clear Love in the jungle, Pawn in mid, Deft at 80 carry and Mako at support. And of course, on the red side for this matchup, it will be AHQ with Ziv in the top lane, Mountain in the jungle, Westdoor from the mid lane, 
AD Carey is. Anne, as well as Albus in the support role. Swapped out for Green T, the former support player. And really, that seemed to be the magic that AHQ needed. Albus bringing in that supportive champion pool and allowing them to play around Anne a little more than in the previous iteration of the roster. We talk about honeymoon phases with rosters. This has been <laughs> the best honeymoon ever. They're going to Tallahassee right here. Uh, honestly, it's because they ran through the entire playoffs while they had this roster coming in. Yeah. And in the draft, specifically this game, I want to look at who drafts a stronger team fighting team. Because when AHQ made this run, it was mainly through the dragon control, and that begins and ends with team fights. Whereas EDG Absolutely. has a slightly more reserved early game than the other Chinese teams. Clear Love will gank a fair bit, but he will very rarely invade the enemy jungler, which sets up a lot of team fights. And I think both these teams are willing to throw down, which means the compositions have and to also, throw yeah. that in. And also something you also have to highlight, talking about that run and how AHQ got to the finals, AHQ really outplayed all of the respective opponents. They had clear plans, good picks and bends, yeah. good execution. EDG scraped through that final. They were gifted wins against LDG, uh, LGD. You know, it yeah. was not a, a clean performance. For EDG, they need to be looking to improve upon those sort of decision makings and that gameplay style if they want to be successful here at the Midseason Invitational. Absolutely. The swap in and out of Pawn may be hurting them a little bit. I did say in the hype video, I don't think anything can stop them, and then Pawn gets sick. Maybe that's the <laughs> thing that kind of takes the team down, right? But so far, still playing well with him, and they can still kind of have that same aspect that they had on Samsung where... Pawn kind of goes crazy in the beginning. Shadow's deft, but depth comes out big in the late game and takes all the kills. I want to see what's happened to Pawn's champion pool since the LPL finals because he had some strange picks there. He last picked a Fizz. He relies heavily on Kasten. His Favorite. twisted fate was yeah. underwhelming. Yet if I think back to when he was a Korean mid laner in Korea, mm -hmm. uh, his Orianna and Ziggs were both actually pretty good champions. And I, I want to see... Orianna at some point in MSI because I think the champion fits this meta very well, but the, the people that made it here aren't necessarily Orianna players of late, right. and it would be a